Hi there, friends and adventurers. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be talking about winter and cold weather camping, how to sleep in your car when it's freezing, because let's face it, at the time I'm filming this, it's already past mid-October. Most of the country is already experiencing colder weather. Maybe not as much here in Florida, since we're still uh, just barely starting to see a teeny tiny cool down. But <laughs> I know a lot of other states are getting their first snow. They're getting below freezing at night. So I figured rather than wait until winter's halfway over, let's talk about what to do to survive the cold when you are sleeping in your vehicle with no heater. If you are new here, I'm Heather. This is my channel, Heather's Hikes and Adventures, where we typically go on hikes and adventures together. And that includes car camping and traveling all around Florida and beyond in my 2017 Dodge Grant Caravan named Tara. And we have had three cold seasons together now. Uh, well, I do typically stay in Florida and well, I agree we don't, um, we're not really known for our cold weather here. I have had many, many nights where I've slept in Tara when, she, when it was below freezing outside. I think my record was 17 degrees and that was when I was in the Smoky Mountains. And then the next day they had shut down the parkway for snow and ice. So I have definitely had a lot of experience camping in freezing, below freezing and freezing-ish temperatures. And I think I've kind of got my system fine-tuned now as far as what works, what doesn't work. So make sure you stay all the way till the end because I am going to give you all of my strategies for how I personally survive dealing with cold weather when I have to sleep in my vehicle with no kind of heater. No propane heater, no diesel heater, other than when my engine is running, which is not while I'm camping. So without further ado, let's get right into that. I have found a few products to be extremely useful when it comes to keeping myself warm or at least not keeping myself frigid. We'll say at least I'm not a Heather Popsicle. So I am going to share those with you, but first I want to get into a few super important strategies that you have to also employ if you want this to work. So let's talk strategy first and then I'll show you the other specific things that I use to supplement my strategies. Now, before you go calling me a hypocrite when I announce that my first strategy has to do with the engine running and using the vehicle's heater, since I did say with no heater, let me explain. My first strategy that I have found to be super, super, super helpful, and of course you're going to want to be mindful of whether you're outside of noise, um, noise pollution hours when quiet time is in effect or not because they do consider an idling vehicle to be a violation of quiet time at most places even if your vehicle is much quieter than a generator it still could be seen if you're just idling so with that disclaimer what I have found to be super helpful is to run my heater I'll turn my engine on and I'll run the heat for about 15 to 20 minutes right before I go to bed and then when I first wake up in the morning and I finally brave getting out from under my comfy, cozy little cocoon, then I'll restart it again for another 15 to 20 minutes just to kind of get the heat enough to where I can brave getting out and change into my clothes. So that's definitely the first tip. And speaking of changing into my clothes, that leads me right into my strategy number two which is going to be making sure that whatever I plan to wear the next day is already picked out the night before because you're gonna wanna put that baby in your sleeping bag or bedding with you. You're gonna wanna kinda shove it right in here up against your torso. It'll keep it nice and pre-warmed for you. <laughs> and then when you wake up in the morning and you pull down the covers and realize that you are quickly turning numb and cold, you'll already have clothes that are not as equally cold and <laughs> numbing to put on because they've been nicely pre-warmed and they'll be all toasty and ready for you to put on before you have a chance to get super duper duper cold. So 
make sure that you do not skip that step either because let me tell you from somebody that has woken up in 20 degrees and realized that I left my outfit out, even just putting it in the sleeping bag in the morning to pre-warm for like maybe 15 minutes, it felt like I had an ice cube next to me. So it definitely helps and it makes getting going in the morning much more doable. Third strategy is more of an anti-strategy if you want to get technical and it has to do with condensation as in how to avoid it. <laughs> you do not want condensation in your vehicle when it is freezing out or below because that condensation will freeze and then you will have frost and ice all inside your vehicle that you're going to need to deal with when it starts to defrost and what is ice when it's defrosted? Water. Do you want water dripping everywhere? No. So do you want to have to scrape the inside of your vehicle every day? No. So the best strategy here is prevention. And what I do to make sure that condensation is a non-issue and you would be surprised at how effective it is, is very simply put, adequate ventilation and air movement. Um, I know that it seems kind of anti-productive or anti-effective to crack your windows at all when you're trying to hold heat in, but these cars are not airtight anyways, so you're getting warm air escaping, granted a little slower <laughs> than if all of your windows are down, but if you have rain guards, which I highly recommend, and you crack your window even like this much, and then you have your window covers on. Um, I still use just my curtains up front unless it's freezing, freezing, and then I'll use my weather techs up there too. But having the insulated weather techs, even with a crack, like maybe this much in the window, and I'll kind of pop the um, edge of the weather tech out so that some air can escape and get through. <laughs> but I do crack the two second row windows a little bit um, to about the rain guard. Same thing up front, and that keeps the draft too. If you don't do it much lower than the rain guard, it prevents kind of any drafty wind from getting in, but not the air circulating in and out. So you have to have the windows cracked. That's essential because the moist air has to escape. <laughs> and then the other component, which again seems very counterintuitive, is fans. I know most people consider fans an essential for if you need to get cool but I think they're just as essential when it's cold out because when you have that air moving inside because you're trying to stay as warm as possible, you're producing a lot of hot breath, especially if there's more than one person or animals in the vehicle with you. And that's all moisture being pumped out. And even in Florida, when it's cold, it is moist. It is humid always. And when you have that damp cold settling in everywhere on your sleeping bag, on you, on the windows, it's just miserable. <laughs> so I think fans are just as important when it's cold because when you have that little bit of crack in your window that lets air escape and come in and you have the fans directed correctly since you don't need to have it on you since you're not trying to stay cool, but you kind of have it directed to kind of flow around, the condensation doesn't settle and it works so well. I have literally never had to wipe condensation or ice or frost from the inside of my vehicle when I do that. I did forget one night to crack these windows and these windows. And even with the fans going, I actually did have frost inside that morning. So make sure you do both. You wanna crack for ventilation and then the fan to get the air moving and not settle. I'm telling you, game changer. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is kind of an instance where quality does matter and you might wanna invest a little more, and that's in getting good base layers. Consider merino wool, um, the cuddle duds, and the, uh, I know they come in different levels of warmth and like the real nice fleece lined ones things like that that are going to keep you dry and like you don't want to wear a lot of cotton because you go to bed freezing 
you sweat when you get all cozy and then that sweat starts to evaporate and when you get out from under the covers you are freezing so do not recommend cotton putting in things like merino wool that are moisture wicking without being itchy and scratchy like some wool can be are huge helps when it comes to cold weather in fact before i go to bed i'll change into my merino wool socks because i want my feet to stay nice and dry and i always want to have dry socks on which leads me into the next strategy of always keeping your head and your feet covered you want to have dry clean fresh socks before you go to bed because again anything that's sweaty is going to make you cold because that's going to be moisture that's in the freezing air and then, you know, science. <laughs> we lose the most heat from our heads and from our hands and feet, but especially our heads and our feet. So you wanna have your feet covered with a good quality sock and you wanna have your head covered. Um, not necessarily with this, so tell you what, let me get a little more prepared here to something like this. Yes, I cheated and only put one glove on for the demonstration, but you get the picture. You wanna keep those hands nice and covered. I actually like the fingerless gloves too because then I can scroll on my phone. <laughs> or even better, the ones like the Carhartt ones that are the fingerless gloves and then you can put the little, mitten, the little mitten hood right over it. Anyways, you get it, keep your hands warm. And what can supplement that, and I highly recommend, are these babies. I'm telling you, I know I've recommended them in videos from last winter. These rechargeable hand warmers, I love them. I don't just use them for my hands. I like to put them in my pocket. I'll tuck them in my sports bra, you know, kind of in my cleavage. And I'm telling you, having that heat right next to your core, it just helps warm you up right away. And these take surprisingly little power and are very fast to recharge, USB-C. And if you get a couple of pairs so that while one's charging, you've got a backup, even better. Highly recommend. I mean, you can get the disposable ones, and I do have those as backup, but these are so much more economical. I think I paid 15 and you can just recharge them over and over and over. <clears throat> Oop, let me not throw them. <laughs> so again, gloves, and you can pop the little hand warmers right inside. And then a good hat. This one is satin lined inside and then it's nice and thick. And then um, nice scarf to keep your neck covered. And you're good to go as far as the added layers. All right, now while we're on the topic of attire, I'm gonna go ahead and take my gloves off so that I can move around. I do wanna mention the other thing that I have found has been instrumental, this thing, another game changer. Let me, first, I should backtrack because I skipped this part in my strategies. You kind of want to look at it as how to keep yourself warm versus how to keep your vehicle warm. So you're not really trying to warm the space around you with any of these strategies or tools, but you are trying to keep yourself warm and comfortable and from freezing. So with that, <laughs> The next thing I have found to be super effective, and I actually did a whole video on it, um, I'll link that below. The company did reach out to me and ask me to review it, and I'm so glad they did because I'm in love, and I think I'm gonna get the vest actually, just for more versatility as well. But this cute, stylish little hoodie, one moment. It's not just any hoodie or jacket. It is a rechargeable, washable, heated jacket. That's right. It's got several heating zones, one here at the neck, one in the back, one on each chest panel. And I feel like I'm forgetting one, but oh, I think there's one in the uh, lower portion of the back as well. But I don't have the battery charged up yet. When you hook it up, it just takes one of these little battery banks that comes with it. You hook it up in one of the pockets, connect it, and then you can pick which zone, all of the zones, whether you want low, medium, or high. 
and it gets you nice and toasty. I cheated and used this because I normally, when I go on a hike, I'll get hot after like 15 minutes, even if it's freezing and start sweating and peeling off layers. So I wore less layers on my cold hikes and just had this on in the morning and then took the chill out after a few minutes, I could take it off and I was already down. I didn't have to keep shedding layer after layer. <laughs> I've also found it particularly useful when I'm at camp before bed because I don't need to use the heater until right before bed if I have this on to keep the chill off. I've actually found this to be more effective than my heated blanket. So if I'm honest, I haven't even been using my 12 volt heated blanket anymore. But of course that is another good and valid option. However, this is cordless and you can wear it around camp without having to have a huge blanket that's hooked to a 12 volt you know, power bank or power station. So you can hike in it like I do. And then as long as you, um, there's no rips or tears on the lining. And as long as you remove the battery pack, you can actually put this in the washing machine when you need to. So I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. I will link it below if I can find a good link for it now. Again, I'm in Florida, so I did not need all of that, and I'm back to sweating again. <laughs> so I had to shed a few layers, excuse the little bits of fuzz flying around. But I did want to mention, that's why I have my trusty notes, that um, it's not just a 12-volt heated blanket that's an option. One thing that's a little more energy efficient, and I think just as effective, is to consider one of those heating pads. Um, I think that you can get some that are rechargeable, but even if not, um, just the plug-in heating pads use less heat than the heating blankets and you can put it right on your core. You know, if you put it right on your chest, abdomen, right underneath you on your back when you lay down, it'll be really effective in warming your core, which will help you feel warmer and not as cold. Another thing that you're not going to want to skimp on, especially... I would say probably a, definitely if you <laughs> are in really cold environments, but even here in Florida where it does dip below freezing some nights, if you're going to be out camping and sub freezing, you want a decent sleeping bag or some kind of equivalent if you prefer bedding to a sleeping bag when you're car camping. I know some people don't like the feel of being kind of encased in one or especially those like mummy bags. Mine is not a mummy bag, but it is rated for, I, it says it's a zero degree, but I think it's really rated to 20 degrees. And you wanna keep in mind that that is the degrees to which you can survive, not to which you will feel warm. <laughs> so you are gonna to wanna to make sure you have those other strategies and tools employed as well, but definitely a good sleeping bag or a good down quilt is worth its weight in gold. Another piece of gear that you may not hear recommended by another Floridian, but again, hear me out, snow pants. <laughs> These things are perfect for at camp. I would never wear them like out hiking unless it was gonna be like super, super, super cold and I was up north or, you know, in the snow when you would wear snow pants. But when you have on like your fleece lined leggings at camp and your other layers, you just slip these on right over your fleece lined leggings and they keep you nice and toasty when you're around the campfire, when you're cooking dinner, when you're getting everything set up for the night. And then once you're ready to turn in, you can just shed that outer layer and you still have your nice cozy, warm fleece lined pants on ready to go. And then boom, done. But honestly, these are <laughs> I know people probably think it's weird that I have snow pants in Florida, but I'm telling you these things when it's like 30, 40 degrees outside and windy and cold, and especially if you're by the coast or the water and you're getting that cold water breeze, I'm telling you, snow pants. Don't just get the puffer jacket, get the pants. Last but certainly not least, look! My water bottle has a little turtleneck sweater. Isn't she so cute and stylish? But it's just one of those, you know, hot water bottles that have been around since like forever. And you just unscrew, add in hot, hot water. Doesn't need to be boiling, just really hot. 
This one is heated for boiling and Nalgene bottles are safe to have put boiling water in, but do not put boiling water in another plastic bottle. It will shrivel up on you. No good. So, but this, you can, you could probably do boiling. I don't let it get all the way to boiling, just close enough. And then it's got its little sweater on to keep it insulated. And I just like to kind of, you know, keep it on my core there. Sometimes I'll put it on my back and then lay on it, but I really like to just kind of hug on to it. When they are not in use, I know I've mentioned it before, I've got my handy dandy pillowcase. This one is for my winter stuff. So I am just going to pop my gloves back in, my scarf. again. So I really hope you found these strategies useful. Again, I want to apologize for my raspy voice. I know it's a little worse than usual, but it's really been struggling the last couple of weeks. So hopefully this next round of testing I have coming up will at least explain and address what could help with that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, if you look at my playlist about autoimmune and chronic illness, you'll see the more recent journey that I've been sharing with you all. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like to let the algorithm know. If you find content and videos like this helpful, I would love it if you would subscribe for future content. And don't forget to go back through all my old playlists that I've curated if there's anything specific you're looking for. But I will see you very soon on the next adventure. Bye for now.